where the innovation was not just in hardware, but it was also in software. We have seen and that revolution has happened in the past 10 years. So I wanted to build this context for you, you know, in terms of how fast things are changing. Now, you look at some of the platforms which we all know or are there. So when it comes to social, you know, uh, media or social networking, as you may call it, or professional networking, the platforms are divided. So in the corporate world, what we say is LinkedIn is for professional networking, right? Facebook, Instagram are, you know, of many, amongst many others are for social networking, right? And and then there are many other platforms, you know, such as Twitter and, and what all, you know, that you have out there. And have you heard someone saying that, you know, I connected with my 15 or 20 year old friend uh, on Facebook. But that happens to people of my generation. People who are born. 15, 20 years ago and who became teenagers when this revolution started. They cannot relate to this for them. They don't understand why you never met your friend for 20 years. Okay. That's the impact technology has had on our lives. Cutting across the generations and the time gap period. Now you apply the same in business. The same thing has happened in business. Now what happens in business, you know, so. You don't only have these laptops and, you know, your iPads and, you know, other mobile devices where everything happens on that. That is today. But how has it evolved? Like I gave you an example how it has impacted us, you know, the, the evolution of technology has impacted us at personal level. How evolution of technology is impacted in business? It's big time, big time. Okay. And. What it is impacting is, and I'll give you a few examples and also clarify a few things. So how were businesses managed earlier? Well, there was professionalism even earlier, like it is there today. So when you used to talk of a process oriented company, the processes were very well defined, but everything used to work in pe pencil paper version, right? When the technology platforms came, Okay, when application software started evolving. The processes got automated. Okay, and then you started getting uh, systems of records. So say, for example, um, you know, SAP, SAP is a system for record. Okay, so whether it is for procurement, whether it is for manufacturing, whether it is for sales, whether it is for human resource management. There were various system of records that were developed, which is nothing but they became the enterprise wide systems okay, of automation and data management. And that's where we started getting into data because once your processes got automated and they came on technology platforms, then what the technology platform started generating is tons and tons of data. Okay, which was digitized earlier. That data used to be again in pencil and paper version. You're, you know, uh, you see these movies and TV series, right? In which they show you go to a police record room or you go to a municipal record room and there are files and files. That was before digitization. That is your data, which was on paper. But today data is digital and it's of all kinds. What has further happened is the ability to house or warehouse your data relating to your customers, relating to your internal processes such as procurement, such as your manufacturing planning, such as your training, such as your learning, such as your recruitment, or et cetera, et cetera. You know, there are thousands of processes that every big business or small business deals with, right? How can data be connected and made sense of from each other? And that triangulation of data has started to happen 
when artificial intelligence or you know what is machine learning and artificial intelligence it's nothing it's again it's logically writing a code or a software and teaching a machine to not only storing or warehousing data but to start connecting dots and making sense of it okay artificial intelligence which we call is based on your machine learning technique so whenever you write the software for the machine to do something basically you are making the machine smart and smart not just hardware wise but software wise also and that entire thing when the machine does with human input which is in terms of just the logic okay that is given or changed or recreated it is known as artificial intelligence okay so the natural intelligence is the human intelligence which will always remain it will never go away okay however artificial intelligence and machine learning is something where while teaching the machines how to learn you also teaching them to learn on their own now okay i i'll i'll give you an example okay so in in the healthcare world okay today what are some of the advances that are happening so when you talk of digital pathology you know when you talk of pathology how does pathology happen well a blood sample is drawn it's put in a vial it's taken to the lab when it's taken through the lab that blood is then put on a glass slide and then that glass slide is put under a microscope and a, a microbiologist or a pharmacologist you know what we call as you know which who are can you hear me now yeah or a pharmacologist or those who are in pharmacology they go and look at it slide by slide analyze the blood sample and then write the pathology report right now the process is the same your blood sample is corrected it's put in a vial it goes to the lab it's put on a slide what is being built now is uh, it's not yet fda approved though um, is that that slide instead of putting that slide under a microscope which a human being is seeing the computers have been trained to look at the slides analyze that data make sense of it and write a report okay and there is always a debate that you know but is the machine good enough compared to a human being well on the other hand you can say what about a human error okay so these things are evolving but that's how you need a lot of data to train the machines and while you're training the machines you generate a lot of data okay and then that data gets verified so it's a very complex yet a very very simple way of looking at it okay this is a revolution this is an evolution that's happening that cannot be ignored hence all businesses all businesses of various kinds have actually now embarked on their digitization journey as i told you getting a sap in your organization and automating your process is not digitization that's the first micro step of digitization digitization is all leading towards you know data sciences and data sciences is a field which is evolving till four or five years ago there was no job description for a data scientist it if it existed it existed in tech companies not in other businesses so people even today when i meet people they don't know a difference between a data scientist and a data analyst many think that a data analyst is the same as a data scientist data scientists are the ones who design the entire journey of how the data will be right from stored managed analyzed and the analysts are only analyzing it and then all the efforts together when goes into doing machine learning it starts becoming artificial intelligence and ai engines are nothing but they are powered by logics given by 
human beings and the machines are taught where they their power of the hardware as well as the software that is created okay and that ai engine then further you know uh, starts doing things which human beings can't do let me give you one more example if it is not very simple so there's a there's a technology that is evolving in uh, in uh, interviewing and recruiting okay so what happens is there's one recruiter in an organization and that one recruiter per day can interview five or 10 people okay how does that person go about doing it reads the cv knows what the job description is gets on to a zoom call or a teams call or in a person meeting and interviews the candidate makes an assessment writes an assessment report and pushes it to the next step same thing is getting digitized now and artificial intelligence has come in where you will go you log in there will be an avatar of a recruiter who will interview you your interview gets recorded your interview is analyzed by the ai engines and it moves to the next process now one avatar can interview thousand people at the same time while as a human being can interview only one person at a time now there are various debates but what if uh, the machine can't do the job properly but then people who debate and say that the machine might do a job better than the human being because you know the human error capability is there then they say that what about the biases because you know human beings can be biased when making recruitment decisions well though on the other hand you can say that whoever is doing machine learning and artificial intelligence coding what if they build biases in those then the machine can also be biased right so a lot of these things are yet getting uh, addressed and they will get addressed and resolved you know uh, none of it is easy but there's going to be uh, an answer for all of this because that's what is known as evolution right otherwise we would have lived in the stone age even today but we didn't and that's because of the the indomitable spirit of human intelligence and the celebration of that spirit is continuously transforming evolving and going towards better same way as you know uh, uh, dr shakti sharma also mentioned that how artificial intelligence not just it's it's being used at a social level okay uh, how data how a combination of devices and various technologies and software application software and based software for example fast tag is one of the examples okay now earlier everyone had to pay take out their hand pay them today you have a fast tag which goes but there's so much more that you can do with that data without compromising with you know uh, privacy and i come now to the most important one one of the most important questions and the biggest questions that remain is in this digitized world in this data oriented world in this machine learning artificial intelligence engine building world how do we ensure data privacy and data security of individuals there are many that i have seen people from uh, my generation or even older than that they still don't trust internet banking and the reason they don't trust internet banking is because i mean and they have a valid reason for that they say that what if someone accesses and takes out my login and my password and people have done that you can just take all the money away which could not happen in the earlier system unless a big fraud of signature and all took place but relatively they had more safety and security they say i don't mind walking to a branch but today the branches have disappeared i have never been to a bank branch for the past 10 years and i don't bank with a bank which is not digitally savvy so you see that is the process of evolution and the same thing is happening in organizations now when you look at how the transformations happen in organizations well what does a business or an organization do it is 
either providing products, services, solutions to its customers. And the customers in turn give them the revenue, which makes a business entity. And the perpetuity of that business entity depends on how good your product, solution, and services are. And that's where you look at it. Uh, the fall of many of the big, big titans like General Electric, etc., have gone because you see, these were organizations that focused only on being product organizations. They never went with services. While as today you look at it, even car manufacturers are becoming and selling solutions and service. Okay. And that is totally amazing, isn't it? But that's what is happening in life and in business. I know I have reached my time limit. So I will take a pause here and I will finish my address. I hope you liked it. And if there is some time left, uh, maybe we can have a discussion with Dr. Sharma. So thank you. So I really feel that when you were talking about, there were so many aspects you were talking about. I being from the nutrition industry, I really felt innovation in healthcare. And most probably when you said that pathological innovation diagnosis would be done by the machines. So that is going to help a lot in this. But sir, what about the accuracy? Are we really focusing that the technology will become accurate? Like we it talk will... about neurosurgery being done by the AI, cancer screening by so, the AI technology. So so let me let me correct you there. So you know, this is this is these are the misconceptions people have. Neurosurgery yes, by AI means what? A robot will not come and perform the surgery. Okay, right, sir. The way, you know, Da Vinci and all these companies have come up with this. So say if there is a surgeon who's sitting in Delhi, there's a robot which is there in Mumbai in a surgical center, okay? That robot is totally hand coordinated and that's where 5G plays a bigger role and even higher bandwidths after 5G will play a bigger role where there's no lag of data because with 5g there's no data lags right or minimal data lag so a surgeon can go put his arms into a, a remote you know uh, radar and via that remote the person will perform the surgery in mumbai so that robot is moving but it's moving because the surgeon is moving it okay and and that's the accuracy which they have reached and that is telemedicine or that's remote medicine or whatever today it is not only the future it's the present so many lives are getting saved today the the entire diagnosis that people are able to make uh, because of digital pathology reports available etc and doctors don't have to wait to see them by standard and they give you a, a way accurate. so absolutely accuracy will be there you see this is this is the this is the problem uh, dr sharma showing hesitation is is uh, is is human uh, very human even i show hesitation when i am not sure about something but showing cynicism is unacceptable because it will perfect 100% it will perfect who have, who would have believed if it was told that you will carry your phone with you throughout your day and night if you wished. If this was told to people 30 years ago? They wouldn't have I, wished, yes, sir. Nobody would have believed. Yes, no, sir. no, but what if I take it to some place? Will I get the signal or not? Even today you have signal challenges somewhere, but it works. It's it's close to perfect. It's like a aeroplane, you know. So when an aeroplane was invented. Everyone liked it, but they said, what if it crashes? Of course, it is bound to crash if it is not maintained well. But aero aeroplane is the near perfect machine that human beings have developed. Their failure rate is minuscule. That's why people are flying like you and me. If aeroplane was not perfect, we won't sit in it, right? Now, do you call that perfect or not? Just because one crash takes place, do we stop taking the aeroplane? So, so that is my answer, you know, to that, if you may like. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Uh, so we have uh, Professor Prachi Sasankar. She is Dean Academics, joined with us. Ma'am has a question and few words to say. I invite Prachi, ma'am.
Good we afternoon, can't, sir. I can't hear her. Yeah. Hi, 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 Dr. Prachi. Sir, good afternoon. And thank you so much for everything, whatever you have shared with us for a formal vote of thanks. Uh, I, Professor Prachi Sasanka, feel privileged to thank Mr. Yeshwan Mahadik, sir, President Lupin Global. From distraction to eruption, how technology has impacted business big time. Sir had covered all aspects which are connected to revolution using AI, data science, and many more. Especially the supply chain management side, the process has changed for good. The examples cited by Sir had given us an idea as to how the world had literally evolved from stone age to modern age. Hence, we need to be digitized in whatever manner we can. Data scientist jobs hopped in from last five, six years or so. And that AI, statistical analysis, data warehousing, and of course, all other things gives us more avenues than we had ever imagined. E-commerce industry has also flourished and so does all other types of services and product industries. Thank you once again, sir, for accepting our invite and enlightening us with your thoughts. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Sharma. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so, Thank you, Dr. Prachi. Sir, you're not audible, sir, please. Can you unmute? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. I am I'm not muted unless someone so you're else. You're not audible, sir. Please, sir. can I help you? Somebody else must have muted me from yes, sir. there. Sit audible. Yes, sir. Hello. After this enlightening session, After this enlightening session with a great keynote address by the eminent speaker, we now move for the next session. But before we begin with the next session, we'll take a short break and resume back when the next speaker joins in. Thank you, everyone. Stay connected. We'll be right back after this short break.
स्टूडेंट्स काइंडली फिल द अटेंडेंस फॉर्म सॉरी फीडबैक फॉर्म students please fill the feedback from properly this is for your certificate so please fill the form properly